Hi everyone, Ariel with Ariel Paints. Today's video is going to be another updated version of all my standard designs and today we are doing the mermaid. I have been doing my mermaid uh, like this for about a year, year and a half maybe and it's super fast, super quick. You can change it up a million different ways and it's very effective on the job, quick three to five minute mermaid. So I thought this would be a good idea because the new movie is coming out uh, pretty soon. So I have a feeling we're all going to be getting a lot of requests for mermaids again. So I hope you guys enjoy this design. And of course, this one's always close to my heart being that my name is Ariel. I have been called the Little Mermaid for the greater part of my life. So I really hope you guys like this super simple, fast, effective mermaid. Stick around and we'll get right into it. I will show you how to paint it. All right, we're gonna jump right into this. I'm gonna use the three quarter inch angled brush by Marcella Bustamante and uh, Neon Nirvana by Leanne Courtney and Fusion. One of my all time favorite cakes and perfect for that sunsetty. Uh, color and background that we're gonna go for. You can sponge this too and there is a Neon Nirvana uh, rainbow cake you can use and when I started doing this design I did sponge on this background and then I realized it was a lot easier for me just to paint it. So do whatever you prefer. Please forgive my messy hair today too. I just got back from the gym and had a hat on and just wanted to get this video out for you guys so figured you didn't care. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start about at the edge of the eyebrow, and I'm going to just pivot my brush over and then fill in to create the background for where our mermaid is going to be. And then for this hole in the center, I'm just gonna take the heel of the brush and just fill in the gaps. And we are gonna add some detail down here so it doesn't matter too much. Go ahead and clean up the edge if you want. Now try not to go too far over the eyebrow because we are gonna put some blue waves here. And one tip I have for everyone, especially when you're starting out face painting, is you wanna think of your face painting designs as color blocking. So don't overlap colors more than you have to. I get a lot of questions from new face painters about uh, paint bleeding or not being able to have good coverage over bases that they're painting. So one of my best tips for you is to don't paint over bases if you don't have to. Think of face painting as individual color blocking, not adding layers on top of layers like some other mediums in art. I think that's where people get confused because we're so used to painting with acrylics and layering things up with other um, artistic mediums and face paint doesn't really work like that because it's water activated. So every time you try to add more layers on top of paint, you're reactivating what's underneath it. So try to think of sections and color blocking. All right, so for our blue waves, I'm gonna take the Paint Pal Big Drop Filbert brush. I have been using this brush a ton lately, and I'm gonna load that up with a blue split cake. This one I'm using is custom that I made some time ago. It's got a uh, dark, kind of turquoisey blue, cerulean blue, and some lilac. I really like this cake, and it's a unique combination that I've been enjoying. So I've loaded up the darker colors on my filbert, and what I'm gonna do is create teardrops around the centerpiece, and that's gonna be our waves. So I'm gonna start the first one up high. So I started the first teardrop a little bit higher than where my background ends, and that's just for good contrast and balance. If I start everything at exactly the same level, it's just not gonna be very interesting. So try to scatter your um, heights of things. Now you can go straight to the other side and do the exact same thing so that you're mirroring your strokes, 
which is something that I tell people to do if you have trouble with symmetry or if you're a new painter, that can be really, really helpful to do one side and then straight to the other. But if um, you don't have trouble with that, then just go ahead and keep going down. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side. This is one of those designs too where depending on the size of the child's forehead, you may have to adjust. Have done this many times where the kid's forehead is not very high, so I don't have room for all of this. So you might have to go like on the side of your brush and do just small little wave areas and that's fine, it just depends. So while I still have that color on the brush, what I'm gonna do is sweep back and forth at the bottom of our sunset because this is gonna be the base for some of the, the wavy water and we'll add to it a little bit. You can kind of stay right on the tip of your brush. You just wanna get some color thrown down. I will sometimes do this on the outside corner of the eye too, especially if I'm in a hurry, just starting to get some color down for the illusion of seawater. So the next thing I do is I get the stencil down for the mermaid and you can use any kind of stencil that you have or want. I have really been liking this one that's kind of just the little silhouette of the mermaid kind of perched, which works really well with having the water edge where I put it. So I am going to use a dauber for this. This is a little finger dauber. I prefer these when I'm doing detailed stencil work or small stencil work like the scales because I have more control. If I grab a huge sponge and I go to try to do just a little bit of stenciling, I'm more likely just gonna get one big blob of uh, stencil and design rather than this where I can be really, really controlled, which makes a huge difference when I do the mermaid tail as well, so you'll see why. But daubers are really um, a great alternative to sponges. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in black. You can do it in a different color if you want to as well. I really like the black uh, silhouette that it creates. I think it creates a lot of contrast and I like the way it looks. All right, so, okay, so I am just gonna go ahead and line this up and I cannot recall where I got this particular mermaid stencil from. I actually have quite a few, but if you go and look at um, some of the online shops, you are bound to find one that is similar to this because there are a lot of mermaid stencils out there. The mermaid is kind of like the unicorn in the sense where like, kids always like mermaids. It's always gonna come around and be popular. Not quite as popular as the unicorn but still pretty popular. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and release and pull that off, pretty good, and move on to our next step. Also, I'll mention I get this question a lot about how to clean stencils. This one is terribly dirty right now because the mermaid has been really popular lately, and my last event, tons of girls wanted mermaids, so this got really, really mucked up, and I don't really clean them on the job because when I get you get them wet, it's really hard to get them then dry. So then you're causing a lot of issues for yourself because if you have a wet stencil and it's at all damp, then when you try to press it down um, and sponge and lift it back up, it's making that background wet. So I would not try to clean your stencils on the job unless you have to and you have time to dry them. Regardless, what I would do on the job is take a wet wipe and wrap it around the stencil and then just very, very gently rub the uh, wet wipe around the stencil and then set it aside and let it dry. You can pat it dry as well, but the plastic tends to really kind of uh, uh, keep that moisture on the surface for a while, so it can be hard to dry them on the job. 
alternatively, I just take them to the sink and I very carefully run a little bit of water. Usually just start with my hands and just start working that caked off paint off of the stencils. And you have to be careful with certain stencils because there's little delicate pieces. Like this one has this little piece right here uh, that's almost getting, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's almost getting bent out of shape. So I'm really careful with this. Uh, stencil because I love it so much, but it is pretty gucked up right now. So before I go to another job, I would clean this. I just don't personally care on my own face. So I did not clean it before this video. So forgive me for that. All right, so this design moves pretty quickly once you get the hang of it. And I do like to add a mermaid tail when I have time kind of dropping from the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you guys what it looks like. I'm gonna take another three quarter inch brush. This one's from the face painting shop. And then my favorite cake for doing this is the Purple Pixie, also from Fusion because it has the green and the purple, which is very conducive to the Little Mermaid colors. So I do anticipate with the new film coming out, uh, Mermaids being very popular again. So what I'm going to do is just take this, drop from the side. I don't want this to be huge at all because I don't want it to completely take over the face. But I went ahead and I did purple on the outside, the green on the inside, and then I flipped it and then I just mirrored it to create that little start of the tail. And then I'm going to reload. And I will show you guys a couple different versions of how you can do the end of the tail. If I am in a hurry, the simplest thing I do is a crescent. So I just go right like that. And I do a quick here, I'll show you. Boom, mermaid tail. Super quick crescent. And then I add scales. If I have a little bit more time, which I do, so if you have more time and you want to be more creative with it, you can go ahead and do more of like a flowery shaped tail and just make it a little bit prettier and a little bit more interesting. It still doesn't take that much time to do this, but again, that uh, little tiny sweep takes no time at all, so. If I'm at public events where I have really long lines, that's what I tend to do. So there you go. It is a little bit prettier this way, but you know, when you are crazy busy, every single second counts. So you can switch it up and do either one depending on how much time you have. You can also add a little bit of eyeshadow if you'd like. I'm just gonna use the heel of that brush I was using and add some purple eyeshadow. Just gonna bring up some of that color and add to the prettiness of the design. So I'm just gonna sweep that right over the eye. A little bit of green is fine too, but I want mainly that purple and then just dab it out. And girls always like it when you uh, put makeup on them, so I try to do something on their eyes if I can. All right, before I do any line work on this, I'm actually going to load my black dauber back up and I'm going to add some scales. I love this small scale stencil. Since I got this one, I stopped using my huge scale stencil. Uh, this is a Tap Stencil 059 is what it says. So I am going to fill in this gap over here with some scales, and then I'm gonna taper it down so I'm making it heavier and wider at the top and then I'm tapering it down, which is a control that you can get when you have a dauber and a little harder when you have a huge sponge. 
So I'm gonna actually layer this back up and just take it to the top of that so there isn't a gap. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. This is a really, really quick way to fill in empty open area. And then I'm gonna add scales to my tail, which is gonna give it a lot of definition and make it very, very cute. Again, if you have any gapping, just layer it back up. You don't have to line it up. Just layer it back up and fill in that gap because we're just adding texture and we want to bring everything together. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just the illusion and the visual that we're going for that it's one cohesive design that is aligned together and it's not just floating out there. Um, you can drop these scales down onto the cheek just a little bit too. Just try to do it and so it kind of ends in a little bit of a, a triangle shape so it has some form to it and it's not just a big blob. All right, so one of the things I love the most about this design is line work is 100% optional. You can add glitter here and stop or you can add some line work if you have time. At the very least, what I will do at an event is I will highlight the mermaid. I'll try to do this without covering it up for you guys. Oh, this is one of the reasons why I love uh, the face painting shop pointed round brushes because I can do the tiniest little highlight with the tip of this. And then I can also do some uh, not really thick line work, but decently thick line work. And then I'm not switching back and forth between brushes. So at the very least, I would highlight this girl because I really do think it makes her stand out and it's pretty. And then I want to go back in and I want to add some highlight to our beachy waves and some like sea spray. So you kind of want to stipple and drag the brush and this is gonna help with that illusion of our mermaid being in the ocean. And you wanna do the same thing over our blue on the side. So it's just our little waves. So at the very least, that's what I do with the white and then add glitter and be done. But I do sometimes do some line work at the top, just adding some white teardrops to represent splashes. And do some dots on the inner corner of the eye and I'm just going to do a few dots at the top coming from the largest teardrop not necessary but sometimes I do it and you can even flick these like flick the end up I do that sometimes too there's so many variations of this that you can do it's just completely up to you. All right, now it's time for glitter. I have used this Vivid glitter for my mermaids for some time. It is a wax-based glitter and it's this beautiful shimmery turquoise color. 
Um, this version of it, I'm not sure is available anymore, but they have something similar on their website called Seabreeze, I believe. So you can go check that out. Any blue glitter will do, but this one I just think is gorgeous. So I usually always put it above the mermaid and then I start filling in on the sides a little bit. And this is absolutely the moment where everyone is like ooing and aahing because it really, really finishes off this design quite nicely. And this really is very, very quick on the job. This is not meant to be the most elaborate mermaid design anyone's ever seen. It is meant to be an effective, quick, and easy design. So you can go ahead and throw some of that glitter on. It really helps let the design shine. I don't know why I can do eyeliner with paint so well, but when I'm doing it with makeup, I can't. Maybe I should just use face paint to do my eyeliner. I did that way too easily. All right, last step is lips. I am using the Melted Matte Too Faced Blue Lipstick. It's just too perfect for this. I talked about these lipsticks and how I use them in my last couple videos, but um, using a disposable applicator so that I can keep my lipstick nice and sanitary. And it does add a really cool moody look to this. And then a super fun thing to do is to grab some fine glitter. This is American Body Art Cream Neptune, and it is a blue cream glitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it on my finger and I'm going to dab it on my lips and give myself glitter lips, which every girl gets really excited about. So there we go. So here it is. This is my updated mermaid design. I've been doing my mermaids like this for the last year or so, and it's really, really fast on the job. You can do a bunch of different colors, different variations. So I hope you guys have fun with this. I hope the new movie is awesome and that a lot of kids are requesting mermaids from us in the next couple years. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.